This is my ranking of all eight of the Harry Potter films. Hope you enjoy. Now I've put The Order of the Phoenix last on this list, but it is no way a bad film. It is still a fantastic movie, and uh, you know, it was David Yates' first attempt at a Harry Potter film, and he did an amazing job. I think what holds Order of the Phoenix back, necessarily, is uh, its, its story is weak, and I know I'm not just looking at the story, and I'm focusing on the films as well. Just as a whole, it's a bit boring, and when I was younger, it's the only Harry Potter in which, um, part way through, I got bored and I stopped watching it. Um, none of the others, I did that, so I think with myself, that just goes to show. Once again, it's not a bad film, it, it is, uh, it's still really, really great. I just feel it falls short compared to some of the others, just there's not as much character to it. Um, but yeah, still, still a... A great, a great film. Now, The Deathly Hallows Part 1, I put it 7th and I, I still love the film. And what's really great about this film is kind of the different locations that they go to throughout. Um, and, you know, it's not just in Hogwarts. And I think it's really great for them kind of, you know, exploring more of what the world had to offer. And uh, yeah, it was kind of a nice kind of difference. We haven't seen anything that different since Goblet of Fire. But again, what holds it back is that it is a little bit boring. There are some points where you just kind of feel like, this could kind of hurry up a bit. There's no amazing standout moments. There's some really great bits like Malfoy Manor and when they um, break into the ministry as well. And uh, some of the shots and some of the music and some of the moments like Harry and Hermione dancing are all great, but it's still not one of the best, I think. Let me just say that The Goblet of Fire is great and it is super entertaining. The story is really interesting and different and you get to see so much more than you've previously seen uh, of the Wizarding World up to this point. But I did not like Mike Newell's style uh, and the, the, how it did weird things, you know, like Bo Battens only having girls and Durmstrang only having boys, uh, which is completely against the law of uh, Harry Potter and also just, you know, them all having long hair, just a nitpick, but it's still a great film and there's so many amazing moments and I love like the Black Lake and uh, the mystery uh, surrounding the film, but again, there's not much of a reveal because it's kind of, you know, you know Mad-Eye isn't who he says he is from what it implies, so there's not much mystery, which is a shame, but still a very good film. Now, with the fifth on this list, uh, with The Chamber of Secrets, we're getting more into the films that I, I really do love. And The Chamber of Secrets is usually quite low on most people's lists, but it's still really great. And Chris Columbus's style, uh, as well as The Philosopher's Stone, it really captured kind of, you know, the, the young side of Harry's experience at Hogwarts and the mess around, because he's only a kid still. Um, though it does get darker with the basilisk and everything, and there's much more danger in this one compared to the first film but it, it's still it's still really good and i love the the, the feeling of the film and 
all the friendships and everything, it, it's still really nice. And I, some of the characters like Moaning Myrtle and Tom Riddle and Lucius Malfoy, I think, are all done really well. And I think if you rewatch this film, you'll really appreciate it when you really look at it and think, you know what, this is actually a, a really enjoyable experience. It's a great film. Now, I feel like this is where people are really gonna disagree with me in a lot of cases with this film, but The Deadly Hallows Part 2 is fantastic. If, you know, we were comparing it to other films outside of the Harry Potter franchise, it would still be super high up. Uh, it's amazing, and, you know, it comes down to J.K. Rowling's writing as well, and how she brought the whole series to an end. Really, really great, and it's got so many great moments in the Battle of Hogwarts and Gringotts at the beginning really amazing and some of the shots are just beautiful and the reveal of Snape's story makes him one of the best characters I think written in cinema history. Really amazing film but doesn't have the charm that I feel these top three have and um, it does a great job at being a finale but is it the best Harry Potter film that makes you feel the most like a wizard? I don't think so but it's still a truly amazing film. Now with the top three, we're starting with the Philosopher's Stone, and this film is great, and a lot of people really throw it aside. Just looking back at it as the first film, it's got so much charm and the magic is really there. Just the, the, the colouring as well and how kind of, I've noticed the film's very golden um, and it, you know, really entices you into the film um, and the characters are all cast so amazingly from, you know, the younger students to all the adults as well. Uh, really charming film, just a, a beautiful watch really and uh, it, it's the most light-hearted as well of all the films I feel um, and it does it really well and Chris Columbus had such a difficult job at starting up such a major franchise and bringing it to life um, so I think he did an amazing job and just the sets and everything make this film absolutely fantastic and is a must-see. Now, The Half-Blood Prince at number two is probably quite a controversial pick for most people. And a lot of people didn't like this film uh, because just like me, they love the book. And it is my favorite book by far. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, the mystery behind The Half-Blood Prince and just all of the story is amazing. But I still think the film did an amazing job. And uh, all the moments, you know, the cave is probably my favorite moment in the entire franchise and Harry and Dumbledore's relationship, I still think is done so fantastically. And uh, Michael Gambon's performance is superb. Really fantastic film. And Bruno Delbanel, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, was fantastic when it came to the cinematography. Um, and I feel like as a filmmaker, if you rewatch this, you'll really appreciate how beautiful this film is. Truly fantastic, and I think it isn't kind of rated highly enough. Uh, among the films, that's why I put it at number two. Now, number one, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, a lot of people probably saw this coming, but it is just fantastic. And I feel like Alfonso Cuaron turned this franchise into the right direction so brilliantly with this movie. And the only film in the franchise more beautiful than The Half-Blood Prince is this. The cinematography is phenomenal compared to the, you know, all of cinema history. 
this film is actually a standout. It is beautiful and the setting of Scottish Highlands for Hogwarts just complements this so much. But everything about this film, from David Thewlis's performance as Lupin to Gary Oldman as Sirius and the entire story of the Marauders and Harry trying to learn more about his father is brilliant. This film is a must see. Even if you don't want to watch the entire franchise, watch this film. It is standalone, great. And you just don't want it to end. Truly amazing film. That's why it's at number one.